Hey everyone, welcome back to the Corporate Finance Academy. Today we're going to go through volume three of our financial analysis series. This is where we're going to go through vertical analysis and per unit analysis. We're going to go through both vertical and per unit analysis and talk a little bit about what they are and then we'll do Excel examples of each and then we'll wrap things up. So vertical analysis, I think of it more as just percentage of sales and I'm focused on the income statement here, but that's the way I think about it and per unit. They're different measurements. The first is really looking at the relative size of something. On, and again, I'm talking, I'm focused on the income statement. You can do this on the balance sheet as well. But what percentage of an income statement account is, is that of sales? So your SG&A is, let's say it's $10, your sales is $100 your SG&A is 10% of your sales. Similarly, you can look at a per unit basis. Tesla, for instance, what is the total cost of goods sold per car? Both of these things can give you really interesting insights into your data. So vertical analysis, um, you know, you'll see the textbook definition of this and they'll talk about vertical analysis and horizontal analysis. Frankly, I think that's kind of dumb and it's really a textbook definition. Again, I think about it as a percentage of sales. If you just look at vertical analysis without comparing it to anything, it doesn't really mean anything. So if your SG&A was 10% of your sales, what does that mean? You have to look at it versus your budget or you have to look at it trending over time. That's where you can get valuable insights. And the reason this is important is because dollars alone don't tell you a story. So sometimes you look at a variance. You're doing your normal, let's say, budget to actual variance and a dollar variance seems really large. So you could have an instance where, oh, you look and SG&A is way up year over year, but when you look at it as a percentage of sales, it looks okay because sales jumped 20% and you weren't expecting that and your SG&A increased as a result of that. So that's just one example, but dollars alone don't always tell you the story. And then as always, and this, you're gonna see this on both, but we're doing this insights from our data so we can drive action within the business, run the business better, not just to report the news. So let's jump to the Excel model. All right, so vertical analysis or percentage of sales. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start a column here and we'll just say percent of sales. And you can name it something better. <clears throat> but what we do with the math is we divide it by sales. So you have cost of sales here, 80.4 million. We're going to divide that by the 100.8 million. And what we're going to do is we're going to use our references, absolute references, so that we can anchor this, so that we can just copy the formula down. And because we don't have that, that many rows, I'm just going to do this really fast. I know there's, there are many more efficient ways to do this. I'm just going to put it in there. We actually don't need anything there. <clears throat> and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this format put it over and then I'm gonna switch all this into percentages and there you have it. So that gives you your first step of vertical analysis. This says cost of sales is 79.8% of our revenue, SG&A is 11.2, other operating is 2.4. So you get that look and this is what the textbooks would call vertical analysis. And that might be good if you're comparing it to like an industry benchmark or something like that. But this column in itself doesn't tell you anything until you start to combine it with what the textbooks would call horizontal analysis or trending or looking at it versus your annual operating plan. So what I'm going to do here, and let's see if we formatted this right, is I'm just going to bring this in and say, well, what does it look like in 2020? I'm replace that. And then we'll do the same thing for 2019. We'll pull this over and look at 2019. We'll update our, our labels here. So now we have some trending and now you can start to look and say, well, what is this? What does this really mean? What is this telling us? And let's say for instance, your EBITDA as a percentage of sales is getting better every year. You're growing margin accretive. That's a great thing. Um, and you can see similarly your cost of sales. You did have a little bit of a, a high point in 2020 at the 83.6 right here but then you've gone back down to the 79.8 over here, so you're getting back on track. 
SGNA is interesting because it's actually going up every year. We're not getting a lot of scale out of SGNA in this company, and that's something you'd want to dig into a little bit. It's a trend that you wouldn't maybe necessarily expect to see. I typically think of SGNA growing at maybe half of what your revenue was growing at, which should give you some of that accretion over time, a little bit of, of scale or leverage. So that is vertical analysis. And you can do the same thing. You can compare it to the 2021 plan, but looking at these trends can tell you a lot about what is going on. Even this, right, your other operating costs, you're leaking here. It's going up as a percentage of sales every year. So you've got some real work to do to go look and see what's going on here. So then per unit or volume analysis, I mentioned this before, but this is like the Tesla example where what are the total cost of goods sold per car they produce? And again, the per unit information isn't always on the income statement. So this is more of something that you'd be looking for internal in your company, not pulling down a company's financials because they may or may not report that. So you need the volume component. And similar how dollars don't tell the story, sales alone don't tell the story. So sales are sensitive to both volume and price and even things like FX. So if you look at the information on a per unit basis, that actually normalizes those factors. So let's just say you rose your price to your customers 15%. So naturally, if you look at your cost of goods sold per dollar, of sales, it's going to look better because you raised your price 15%. Your sales as a percentage of your cost of goods sold as a percentage of sales is going to look like it got a lot better. And that might make, make you feel comfortable about your cost footprint, but you should really be looking at what your cost is per unit. And that's where this comes into play because that 15% price increase, you didn't sell any more units. You didn't produce any more units. So it's not going to give you a distorted view of what your cost is doing as a percentage of your sales. And again, we're looking to drive insights out of that data. Let's jump back to the Excel model. Per unit, we've got the units sold right here. And again, this is more of an internal analysis thing than it is examining a, a public company that you don't actually work within because they don't all pub publish volume. What you do here is you're going to take even things like net revenue, your sales per unit sold. Some industries call this ASP, or average selling price, but we'll just put sales per unit. And I know we, let's just get rid of what we did before here. Now we know that our sales per unit have actually been, they're trending down a bit. And a lot of that could be due to mix, um, it might be pricing components. You, you never know what's happening there. You got to dig into it a little bit deeper. Next, we could look at SGNA per unit or COGS per. Well, first we'll do COGS per unit, and this is a pretty high level income statement. What I like to really see are things like material cost per unit sold in the manufacturing business, or overhead per unit sold. Those are where you can start to get into some good trending data to understand what's, what's really going on. So similar here, we're gonna run this forward and let's just do a couple of these before we analyze it. So we'll hit SGNA and we'll do that as a per unit on a per unit basis. And then we'll do, um, let's just do EBITDA on a per unit basis. So what does EBITDA look like per unit? We'll run these all out. Let's make a better format here so we can read it. Okay, so what do we see? And remember, this is planned, so these are trending. So we see, interesting, 2020 was a little bit of an anomaly year where you saw price go up, you saw COGS go up. That would make me think that maybe there's a mix element going on where we sold more of a certain product. The other thing, depending on the business, this could be COVID-driven, 2020, kind of peak pandemic timing, that could change some behavior. You also, similar to what we saw in the percentage of sales, you see SGNA per unit sold going up. Um, but in total, it's good news because EBITDA is going up per unit sold. So that, that, again, it could be mixed. It might not necessarily be great news, 
But this is where you got to double click on these and get into more detail on what's happening behind the scenes. That's all we have for you today. Please make sure you subscribe and join our newsletter. Like this video. If you have questions, drop them in the comments below. We'll have more content out. Hopefully this vertical analysis, percentage of sales, sales per unit or per unit analysis is good for you to add to your app a toolkit. It's useful and it can give you the areas that you want to focus on when you go double click to get to the next level of analysis.